Right, in this video I want to show you how to very quickly segment a CT scan and then prepare some bones for 3D printing. Hopefully the whole process will only take about 10 minutes. Uh, let's crack on. So the first thing we're going to need is some CT data. I assume you've probably got your own uh, if you've come looking at this video. Uh, if not, here's a great resource. John Hutchinson and colleagues have uploaded a bunch of data to the Open Science Framework and that's where the data I'm going to be using comes from. I've already downloaded a zip file of CT data of Crocodilus Johnson I and I've unzipped that and you can see we've got 343 files ending in DCM. These are DICOM files. Brilliant. In order to visualize this stuff and segment it we're going to use 3D Slicer. So 3D Slicer is free and open source. It's really powerful generally pretty good, mostly pretty stable, uh, though I'm using the development version 4.9. I like fixing things when they inevitably break. So I'm just going to load 3D Slicer now. I'll just minimize the website and the folder. And so this is the view we're given uh, when it starts up. We've got our 3D view in the middle here, and we've got individual views on the right that will give us different planes through the CT data. Now we've downloaded DICOM data here, so we could click load DICOM data. But I'm going to go down the load data route because then what I'll show you will be equally applicable to a JPEG stack or a TIFF stack. So we hit load data, choose file to add, navigate to where you've got your files stored. So at the moment I've got those in OneDrive, so I'm just going to nip over there, data archive, CT data, Crocodilus Johnson I, and I'm just going to select one of the files and click open. Make sure you tick show options, expand this out, and make sure that single file is unticked, otherwise it'll only load one image. And you want it to load all of them so that it can reconstruct the volume. Let's hit OK. Let's take a moment or two to let Slicer load that data in. Everything will be a little bit slow because I'm running the screen recording software, but there you go. We've got our three slices over here on the right. Uh, I use conventional widescreen view, you might have it start up in conventional view like this. If we left click and drag we can change contrast and brightness and you can play around with that a little bit. You're not changing any data, it's just for viewing these things. Your mouse wheel scrolls back and forth through the slices here and you can see in here we've got sort of quarter of a crocodile. You can see some vertebrae in there and if we go the other way we have up down and left right, vice versa. We can visualize these in 3D space by going to this small pin icon here and then clicking on the eye. And you can see how we've got those in 3D space here. Zoom in and out and it'll change how those things show. And as we move our slices back and forth, they move too. But we want to visualize the volume in 3D. So I'm going to go to this drop down menu and go to volume rendering. And then I have it set to GPU ray casting, which is the best if you've got a half decent graphics card. And then I'm just going to click this little eye icon up here. And you'll see we've got kind of a solid cylinder, and that's because it's visualizing everything. These graphs here, under advanced, dragging these points will change what is shown where. And so we can sort of pull things down and bringing them up a little bit, and we can create, let me turn these off again. You can see we can get the bones there. There's also some presets that are pretty handy. They appear up here under display. So there's a bone preset. Here's something more uh, soft, not particularly useful in this case. There's the outside of the croc. You can see all the scutes at the top there. Great stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna visualize and segment the pelvis. So if we go back to that bone view, Here's some I prepared earlier of a femur and a tibia and fibula. Tibia and fibula. And you can see if I hold those up to the screen, you can see exactly where they are. I want the pelvis to continue my little crocodile jigsaw that I've got going on here. And so that's the part that we're going to try and segment out. So to do so, we go to the Segmentations tab, we select a segmentation and click on Create New Segmentation. Add Segment, Segment 1, I'm just going to double click there and call it Hip. 
Lovely stuff. Edit selected. Up here I need to change the master volume to whatever the master volume is called. I didn't give it a name so it's just called 1 here. And then I'm going to use thresholding. Now before I do this I'm just going to go back to my volume rendering and turn off the volume. This will just speed things up a bit and we won't get confused in a moment. So I edit my selected segment, threshold, and you can see what it's doing here is it's colouring in green all the pixels, all the values that are between these two numbers, which are minus 2800 and plus 31700. And we can just play with that. As we take up the bottom end, we're going to lose the darker colours, and as we bring down the top, we're going to lose the lighter colours. Bone happens to be a lot denser than soft tissue, and so that's generally fairly easy to segment out. Uh, let's find a nice picture. I take it back. Let's put our volume back in there so that we can see what's going on. And let's visualise our slices. Because if we do this, we can move our slices to where we definitely have the pelvis, which is useful for identifying what we're trying to segment here. So there we go. In this <clears throat> little bit laggy there, sorry. Here's our pelvis. Moving it a little bit further forward, and we get the pelvis, and just a little bit further forward, and we should see the femur coming in here. Lovely. Uh, similarly, this one, there we go, and this plane too, might as well join in the fun. Alright, let me turn that volume off again. So I'm going to go to my segment editor, segment 1, which we have called hip, threshold, we've pretty much got the bones there, we can zoom in there or we can use this menu to just pull up one slice and take a look. And you can see how the segments are matching up to the bones, if I pull that up and if I pull that down, like that. You can be very scientific about that, here I'm just going to do it by eye, I think that's nice enough, so I'm going to hit apply. Having applied that, let's go back to our conventional view. If we hit show 3D, this button up here, then what we get, and this takes a moment because it has to visualise these things as surfaces, is everything that's green is now a surface. And you can see we've got all the bones there. Let me turn these off for good measure. And that's great, but we don't want to export this as a single model. We want to just take out the pelvis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the islands function, keep selected island, and then in one of these I'm going to click on the ilium. You can turn off Show 3D and that will make things a bit quicker, it's not too bad here. There, brilliant. So that's got rid of everything that isn't directly connected to the ilium. As it happens, a couple of the sacral vertebrae do touch the ilium. There's a couple of pixels and if we zoom in, you can see it's just here. So, let me put this slice back on and I'm going to move it to where they touch, which is there pretty much. And then I'm going to bring up my red slice. I'm going to turn off Show 3D for a moment, so this will take a second. And there, you can see just there, if we go forward a couple of slides, that's where we get the contact between the sacral vertebrae and the ilium. So if I just take the Erase tool, delete those voxels, and then do Islands Keep Selected Island, boom, we no longer have the sacral vertebrae. And if we go out here and we click Show 3D again, we just have the ilium and the ischium. Now we don't have the pubis, because the pubis wasn't touching either of these, so we're going to have to do that separately. So to do that, I'm going to add another segmentation. Let's call it pubis. It avoids any uh, errors later or any confusion. And I'm going to do thresholding again, and we can use the same values because it's bone again. But what we need to do here is change editable area to outside all segments. So we're only going to create a label map outside where we've already done it. And similarly, overwrite other segments, not. We don't want to destroy the work we've just done. Okay, I'm going to turn off Show 3D for a second. I'm going to apply. So we now have this label map. And then I'm going to find the pubis in the, CT, in the um, scans. So we can see here, I bring the yellow up. 
we can see the pubis going forwards here. I'll islands, keep island, just click in there. Everything else should disappear because it's not connected. If it is, we can go in and manually delete it, but it isn't. I will notice, note to you now that you can see the front of the ilium's not quite there. Let's zoom in a bit. And the reason for that was our threshold was a bit low. So you could change that uh, if you want. I'm not too worried here for the sake of this tutorial. Conventional widescreen, show 3D. There we go. We have a crocodile pelvis segmented out. Let's turn this one off and we can see that. It's then really dead simple to go to segmentations, export models and label maps, export models, export to a new model hierarchy, export, done. We can also export to files here or we can save up here and see the save here. I'm just going to use export to files from here. I'm going to save it to the desktop as an STL. I'll keep it as two files, export. Done. That has opened up my desktop folder with those STLs in it. If we fire up MeshLab, which is also a freely available software, then we can drag and drop those in and visualize them, unify those duplicated vertices, and you can see everything is in the same world space, and that's wonderful. Okay, so now we've got our models out, it's time to 3D print them. So to prepare the 3D print, I'm going to be using Ultimaker Cura software. Again, this is freely available. Ultimaker also makes some of the nice uh, 3D printers. I happen to have a Dremel 3D printer upstairs. The software that comes with the Dremel printer is crap. It doesn't really handle good supports. This software does. There's a plugin available that makes it compatible with the Dremel printer, and I'll put the link to that plugin on the website and in the, uh, in the description to the video. Oh, I've already downloaded and installed this, of course. So I'm just going to fire up Cura. This takes a moment or two to load. And there we go. And so you can see it's already set to run my Dremel printer with the material and the um, build area. It supports quite a few printers out of the box, so you shouldn't have any issues there. Go to plugins the first time you use it, browse plugins, and install auto orientation. That's going to be a really useful plugin. I'll show you why in a second. Anyway, here's our uh, printing area. We can right click and drag around to change our view. And I'm just going to drag and drop those STL files in. So there's the pelvis and ischium, the pub uh, ischium and ilium, and there's the pubis. And then I'm going to click on one, and you can move it around, choose where it goes. But this is where that plugin comes in useful. So I go to extensions, auto orientation, calculate fast optimal orientation. And what this plugin is doing is finding the best orientation uh, to create the most efficient printing time, speed, whatever else. Uh, you can run that a couple of times and it might find different orientations. Just see what you prefer. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same with this guy the pubis, and then I'm going to move them into position. I'm going to print them both at once because why the heck not. So even as I'm moving things around, every time I stop, Cura starts slicing automatically. Slicing means it comes up with the path that the printer is going to take. I've got generate supports and build plate adhesion on because I find they help. Uh, you can play around here with what settings you want, whether you want really fine and slow 3D prints or, as in this case, just fairly average stuff. If you want, you can change your view to layer view, and that's going to show you all of the supports. And I'll zoom in there, and you can even see the layers and how the model will look when it comes out. Alright, from here, simply save to file. For me, I save it as a 3G DREM file, that's Dremel's proprietary uh, format, but you might want a G-code file or a 3MF file, or you might just want to save it out as an STL or an OBJ. All right, and with that, I save the file, and I take it up to the printer, and we'll go and print it out.
Okay, so here we are, we've got our 3D print. You can see it has all the scaffolding around it. Uh, here's the pubis, here's the ilium and ischium. And we're just going to take that scaffolding off. You can be pretty forceful with it. Some of it comes off easier than others. Uh, one of the main reasons I like using the Ultimaker Cura is that its scaffolding is really robust.